Hey guys, I'm back again with another review of a Nicolas Cage movie. Today I'm talking about the 1983 movie Rumblefish. So Rumblefish tells the story of a tough guy called Rusty James, played by Matt Dillon, who lives in the shadow of his cooler older brother in the Motorcycle Boy, played by Mickey Rourke, who comes back to town after being away for a few months. The biggest praise I can give this movie is on the visual and technical side of it. I mean, it's directed by Francis Ford Coppola, who as most people know is Nicolas Cage's uncle, and it's actually the first of three movies that they did together. And Francis of Coppola obviously knows what he's doing behind the camera. The movie is in black and white, which is why my review is as well. And I think they did that partially because the character Motorcycle Boy is colorblind. But it also kind of adds like an interesting and almost nostalgic atmosphere to it. Also the film really does make good use of like shadow, clouds, and fog. Which work well with the black and white. I also have to mention that the cast, because it's basically a who's who of awesome people. You got Matt Dillon, Nicolas Cage, Lawrence Fishburne, Dennis Hopper, Mickey Rourke, Tom Waits, and also a young Sofia Coppola, so you can't win them all. As for the performances, the two that really stood out to me were Mickey Rourke and Dennis Hopper. I mean, Dennis Hopper is always brilliant, and this movie is no exception, even though he's only in about two scenes. And Mickey Rourke brings a lot of charisma and coolness to the movie while also given an understated performance. As a side note, it's really bizarre seeing what he looked like in 1983 compared to what he looks like today. Like in Rumblefish, he has this cool kind of Keith Sutherland look. But after the botched plastic surgery, he just looks like a mess. Matt Dillon does a decent enough job in the lead role, but you know, his performance seemed a little bit off in some, you know, line deliveries. And of course I have to talk about Nicolas Cage, who has a relatively small role here, but he does well with what he's given. He plays a guy called Smokey, who's basically Matt Dillon's right-hand man. He's rocking like a, a 50s pompadour kind of hairstyle. But he disappears from the movie about 20-30 minutes in. And I was like, oh great, guess we're not gonna see him again. But he actually does come back towards the end. And he drops some information that's like, kind of unexpected. And it actually like, affects Matt Dillon's character. So it's nice that there was more to Nicolas Cage's character than I thought there would be. As for the things that I didn't care for, I mean, there's a lot of weird and cheesy stuff in the movie. The names of the characters themselves are a bit silly. You know, you got Rusty James and the Motorcycle Boy. That's kind of hard to take seriously. Also, they keep saying Rusty James. Like, hey Rusty James, let's go over here Rusty James, and then, okay Rusty James, we're gonna Rusty James. Okay, we get it, his name is Rusty James. There's also a lot of really clunky lines of dialogue, like at some point somebody says, You're better than cool, you're warm. Like, ugh. The story in itself is very basic, and there's really not much to it. And in particular, the middle act really starts to drag. The movie is also very heavy-handed and obvious in its metaphors and symbolism. Like the titular rumble fish are in color while everything else is in black and white, so you know they're important. I mean, the movie is based on a book, and it kind of feels like the kind of book I would have to study in high school and point out the really obvious metaphors. Like, examine the importance of the rumblefish. And you have to go, the rumblefish represent motorcycle boy's desire to break free from his confines, and... It's just a little too on the nose for my liking. Overall, I thought Rumblefish was a decent movie. It's got an interesting style to it, and I appreciate the surreal and experimental nature of it, too as well as the all-star cast. But there's not too much else going on for it in my opinion, and it gets kind of silly at times for a movie that takes itself so seriously. So the next Nicolas Cage movie up is a film called Racing with the Moon. So until next time guys, thanks for watching.